Cool. Hey guys, my name is Kendrick and welcome to In a Female. Today I'm interviewing Julie. So welcome, Julie. Hi. <laughs> so Julie, um, how long ago did you get type and what was your typing result when you got it? Like what's your exact um, op type slash personality type? Yes, so I am T-I-N-E, Consume Play Blast, Double Feminine. And I got typed June, I received my typing from Dave and Shan, June 1st of 2018. So you are a very extroverted INTP. Just yes. You have sleep blast and you have double activated FE. Yes, so yes. So like recently when I went on this trip I was telling you about before the interview, I was hanging out with Parker, Dave, and Shan. Yeah. I was the most ext extroverted <laughs> out of all four of us. So if that yes. helps anybody, I was one bouncing around and just <laughs> talking a lot. <laughs> Were you more extroverted than Dave? Because Dave also has that, you know, play blast, blast play crackhead combination. Yeah. Yeah, no, he definitely has it too. I mean, too, it's hard to gauge because it was like the end of the week and it was Friday night and Parker and I had been on vacation and they had been working. So Dave might have been more tired. So oh, it's hard to say exactly from there. But from that day, it definitely was seemed like me, Dave, and then like Parker and Shan were much more mellow. But, you know, I have to see Dave more often to see how, but he still does have that sleep first. But I don't know. We're both pretty extroverted, though. Both got that play blast and touching and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what did you think when you got your type back? Did it sound like it was accurate and did you resonate with it? Like, I resonated a hundred percent. Um, so I had been reading a lot about Myers-Briggs all that previous winter. Uh, I became really fascinated with it and I was pretty sure that I was an INTP back when I read all that. It just really jived. I was like, yep, yeah, makes sense. Have all these problems. And uh, then I found objective personality like March, April, May, June, like in late April, because I, I pretty much found objective personality, consumed a lot of it for a week, and then like <laughs> submitted a video to them. It was like, type me, you guys are brilliant. Like, I love your work. Um, and in that time, whenever, in that week, whenever I was watching their videos, Dave said that nobody can see their, not nobody, but that most people cannot see their major demon. But it was funny because when I watched their videos, I was like, FE problems. I have mega <laughs> FE problems. Like, yes, I do. But when he said that, I was like, oh. And I started debating whenever I was waiting for my video. I was like, oh, okay, then maybe that means I have TIFE in the middle and I'm an observer. So I kind of moved away from that and was exploring that, but I knew I had TINFE and yeah, and N and a masculine amount of N. I was aware of that. So but so whenever I got my video and they were like, You are an INTP, I was like, Yep, yeah, jives, everything jives. And everything they told me, I was like, Yes, I do that and that. Um, like one of the funny things they told me, see here I am blabbing. Um, <laughs> one of the funny things they told me was that uh, I'm a nope machine. Uh, that's what they kind of call me in my type. And so oftentimes when I hear something for the first time, I'll say no. <laughs> and in their video to me, they were like, you're a nope machine. And I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> and I was like, ah, ah, I just did it. I just nope machined what came at me. What's, <laughs> it's a, like, what, what's a no machine? <laughs> so it's like my brain for, uh, it, whenever I hear something new, I'm lead masculine TI, right? And filtering up to that masculine NE. So it's like, I'm always, everything I hear, I'm trying to send through this filter where I check it against possibilities and I masculine TI sort of want to give it a yes or no, a logic yes or no. Like, is this right or is this wrong? And so a lot of things that come in, I'll be like, yes, no, right? And the nope can be really strong at people and it can be incorrect because sometimes it's a knee jerk. Like that's when they had to learn in my 20s, right? To kind of like, oh yeah, that's a knee jerk reaction I have to truly understand something. I need to further process it. But just like that, they were like, you're a note machine. And I was just like, no, I'm not. <laughs> like that was just my first yeah. thought. <laughs> it was just like, no, I'm not. 
<laughs> which was just like, oh, yeah. I could see that I just did that. And I was like, oh, now I am a note machine. And whenever I told my husband, he had a good laugh because he was like, I've been trying to tell you that for years. <laughs> you're like, no, I'm not. Wait, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was like, oh, crap, I am a note machine. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, seeing that in myself hasn't made it stop. I still have that sort of instant gut reaction a lot of times. But it, it's very helpful to know it so that when I see it, when I do it, I can kind of self-correct and be like, why don't we process this a little further? <laughs> uh, what is, what is the double masculine consume like for you? Oh yeah. Uh, intense. So that's definitely one part of it. Um, is that I feel very certain of whenever I consider something, um, in the context of whether I think, for instance, something, uh, is true or not, it's, I hold very firm to that and it can be a bit, um, uh, I don't know the, like, what's it like for me? I mean, <laughs> it's my savior, right? It's actually the kind of the hardest thing for us all to see, right? That's what Dave and Shan say. Like, we can see a lot of ourselves, but to see what we do all the time instantly can be kind of hard. But I guess I just feel very sure of conclusions when I come to them. Is, is your consume just plainly for information or does it also involve, like, you know, like, like physical stuff like food and stuff oh okay you know yeah that's so interesting um like food i mean wow i mean that's something i want to take and sort of think about for a while because i i haven't visited that that thought in a while because i know that they say uh a lot of times eating will be involved um Something I can say sort of related, something I can play blast throw off the view yeah. <laughs> right now is uh, when I talked to Dave Lee, he was saying me who had, we can be really weird with food and have lots of also like physiological problems that we cause ourselves and our bodies, right? <laughs> sort of like taking care of your body is a very SF thing, right? And so um, I definitely have manifested those things in my life. I have celiacs um, and these sorts of issues. Um, and I do think there's a biological component where I think I sort of must have inherited genes for celiacs or what have you but two it's definitely my mind turns so much and it turns and it turns and it's what I love and it's where I'm masculine it's what I want to do all day is think about stuff and then meta think about how I'm thinking about that stuff uh like it needs fuel right? if I do that to my mind all day it needs constant fuel so like in my 20s I'm 32 now like it was like I would go run, 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 burn my brain out, burn my body out, have to go eat a lot. Um, and whether or not that in part is also manifesting itself as the consumed savior, I'm not sure. But what I can say regarding that, what I feel pretty certain about is that my NT mind really burns itself out. It tends to burn itself out and it needs fuel and it will crave sugar because the mind you, likes to burn lots of sugar, right? Um, I'm trying to move away from that to a healthier place. Uh, it's been a work in progress, it continues. Um, I don't constantly crave food the way I used to. I try to break my mind away from constantly processing more. I set alarms for myself every half an hour, like, okay, go, I don't know, like go do your laundry or something, go do something in the physical realm and get out of your mind. Um, so sort of a long winded answer to your question is yes, I see it. Is it just the fact that it's consumed? I'm not 100%, but it's definitely related.
Yeah. Now, yeah. your second savior, which is super obvious, is you have play as your second savior. Um, and your play is NF. So <laughs> what, is, what, is, uh, what is your NF play like? And uh, you know, that's going to be very different from a lot of INTPs, you know? So like, what is, you know, like, how does that manifest in your NF play? Like, do you like talking about like personal development and, um, you know, what, like, what's the thing that they talked about how NF work is like, um, like, why, why does it matter? You know, like, oh. like, like, what's, like, what's the point, you know? And what I feel like that's an F-I-N-F. Right? Okay. Would you agree with that? Why does it matter? I feel like that's an FI. That's the NF, but it's kind of restricted down the decider line. Why does it matter? Right? Or like, it's like, like, what is it? Like, okay, like, let's talk about like, um, um, I think they, they had a video about Seinfeld and uh, Seinfeld's partner was NF. So his, the partner knew the direction that the show should move towards because the partner w had that NF, but Seinfeld was the NT. So he figured out how that they were going to do it right now, because you have N okay. NF as also a savior, you feel like, you know, life direction or something along those lines is something that comes also easy to you along with NT. Oh, okay. Um, well, there's life direction. Um, Life direction, I feel like, is consumed sleep for me. Um, so, I mean, can I show you, whenever you first brought up NF Play, I wanted to show you this. I just, um, yeah, this is how I... Go for it. <laughs> this is how I, I think, this is how I see my um, NF Play. Can you read that? Uh, we, I don't know what that, T-H-U-N-K? It's, okay, so my, my, this is how I see my NF play <laughs> and that whole side. It's like, wee, right? And then eventually I go down the line and I hit a wall because eventually I get down there and I hit sleep and it's like, wee, thunk. <laughs> like hitting the bottom. That's NF play right there. It's, for me, it's playful. It's not F-I. It's not directing me. It's the opposite of direction it's where i play it's where i interact i see all the connections i i come up with intuitive things that then i have to go clean up later it's a very very playful zone and that's like it for me and then i have cs know thyself for me getting towards my life directions i have to sleep is last in my stack but i have to try to consume sleep really look at my priorities um look at where i am it's uh you know that's something dave and shan have really helped me to see because before uh getting information from them about myself i definitely thought i was better that at that than i am right which makes sense like i knew i was a chaos monkey i was like yeah people have been telling me i was a chaos monkey for years but i thought that i was much better at directing myself and prioritizing but now as I see it, um, that's hard, you know, using my known and continuing to build my life in a direction off of what I already have is not easy for me. I just want to jump like over here, right? Consume and e consume, like jump over here. Play, <laughs> right? yeah. yeah. So uh, in answer to your question, NF play for me is not life direction. It's just a very intuitive, playful thing where I see all the connections Oh, and a second thing that I think is also NF play, and I actually need to watch the Byron Katie video, but when I can access my NF play, I feel like I'm very good at understanding other people's perspectives. And I see the other INTPs talking about that too, how we're very open-minded. I think that's the NF play. We're like, well, I can see a thing from any direction, like, sure, you know, you might feel this way about it. That person might feel that way about it. I feel like that's enough play with the focus on the decider aspect of it, seeing things from different people's perspectives. I see. So it's, so I guess like for us ENFPs, um, our NF, NF is like self-guiding, you know, to guide us where we want to go um, into the future. But for you, it's like, it's like if, if like an ENFP or an INFP would, were to tell you what their 
F I N F is for life direction, you'll be like, oh, that's so interesting. That's so fascinating. Let's go, let's go, let's go explore that further, you know? So it's like, it's like, a, it's like a tool for conversation, you know, to have some fun, you know, you know, like figure out the possibilities. It's, it's like for that purpose, not, not so much like to guide yourself because your guiding, guiding tool would be kind of like what you just said, which is your TI and your SI, right? Um, so that, that makes perfect. Right. What about your blast, yeah. double feminine blast? What's that? What's that like? Like that's that's interesting because uh, Dave also has double feminine blast, right? So what's what's your double feminine blast like? Okay, yeah. So, and this is oh, ooh, now we're getting down to the demons. Do you see me like shifting? I'm like, oh yeah, this, yeah. we're getting harder. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're going we're deep we're diving deep. Yeah, I yeah. dig it. I dig it. <laughs> no, yeah. and like play blast. I dig it. Um, like. Ah, I have so many thoughts about it too. So, uh, something related to this, um, the, so it's double feminine. It's feminine on the sensory. It's feminine on the tribe. And something that really related to me in Ty Lopez's video. Okay. He has N I and S E and whatever, but he, he's blast sleep play. He's got a lot of differences, but he's feminine sensory, feminine tribe. And he, <laughs> this moment, <laughs> he was like, wow, guys, you know, what's really cool. If before you do stuff, if you try to write it down first, <laughs> like he had, it was like this, like, isn't that weird? Right. Cause he's, I'm sorry. I should have, he's lead and I, uh, he's an INTJ, double feminine, blast lead play. I'm pretty sure I'm not, I have that 100%. But like, so that's one aspect of it, right? It, there's that feminine sensory, feminine tribe. At least I think that I'm connecting that with him. It's something I'm kind of currently looking at. Like, I have trouble doing things uh, in any sort of, organized fashion without going and writing it down and when i was talking to shan recently we kind of were talking about this because she was asking me to elaborate a bit on it too in a from a different direction um i'm not actually sure how we got to that point but like um like i had brought up to her that whenever i did math in high school and these sorts of things. I would get in trouble with teachers a lot because I always insisted on using pen for my math. And teachers hated that because it meant lots of scratchy and out marks and stuff like that. Stuff I can understand a bit more now. I didn't have blast back then. You know, I was consumed play, right? Like most of us are just in our saviors as you know, young teens. And you know, they would ask me like, why are you doing that? And I'm like, I don't know. It's just what I do. <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> right? I'm like, oh. and there's lead self too. Like, I don't know, but I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't care. <laughs> middle finger. <laughs> like, <you> know. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, That's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't move me. Yeah, you deal with this. Like, yeah. you're the teacher. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, such an asshole. <laughs> so, um, but like, years late, like in my 20s, I realized. Like, you know, in high school, I, I tried to figure out why I had to do it that way. And I didn't know. And I convinced myself that the pen felt better on paper, which I think it does. But that's not, it, it's like, if I erase things, they're gone. Does that make sense? It's like, if I, like, I need to write things down and I need to write them down in pen. And if they're not, they're gone and it freaks me out. And I don't know where I came from. And I think that's my double feminine blast. It's like because your blast directs you, right? And I'm just so movable there that if I don't keep something concrete about it, you know, and it's such a demon, it just, and I, I lose where I am and I just go gather more and more and more. And I think that I'm moving along a blast path, but I'm not. So I have to really put things down concrete for myself. Um, that's part of how... I believe uh, my feminine blast sort of manifests itself. Well, it, yeah. it sounds like what you were doing is like, you know, you're, you're doing your work and then when you scratch it off with the pen to, and, and then try to do it again, 
I think when you scratch it off, that, 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 that scratching off is also part of, of the process of figuring out the solution, right? So, like, you can't just erase it because you had to go through that, like, trial and error process for you to get the, the result. So, like, when you scratch it off, even though you scratch it off, yes. it, was, it was still there on the paper. That means it was still part of the process to get the result. So, it was still a, an important piece. Exactly. So, I don't know if that makes sense. Or if yes. No, you said it very well. Yeah, yes. I, mean, I mean that's that's it, my interpretation at least. <laughs> no, yeah, no, that I I agree. I think you took what I said and you said it very well. I translated yeah. for everyone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you. No, exactly. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take that bite and send that to Shan because I like the way because you said that so well. Like that is the English version of like whatever you just yeah. said. It's like I don't know where I'm coming from. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. That's. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I, I get. I, I think like the way you explained it was maybe NF, maybe or, or, or I don't know, but like, like I feel like I can translate NF for people. <laughs> so, so it's like, oh, good. You know. But a- anyways, um, that makes uh, sense. That makes sense. Yeah, and Dallas is always telling me too how NF I feel because of that double activation there, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, let's yeah. talk about your fourth animal, the one that you have the most struggle with supposedly is sleep um Mm -hmm. which is kind of odd because typically for like a a typical intp this should typically be your second um second animal um Mm -hmm. but for you it's fourth so how do you use it right now or do you use it at all like how are you using ti and si together yes um or lack of their of use (laughs) you know and it's a process um, because since June 1st, 2018, it's like I find ways to gain my sleep and I get really strong with it. And then my consume play blast mind finds ways to trick me and to convince me, oh yeah, and we're still doing sleep and it jumps me away from it. And so I constantly have to pull back. But I think even that is my sleep. Constantly pull back. I have to constantly remember, wait, put on the brakes. Am I actually doing that? (laughs) Is this actually sleep? Am I actually moving from my priorities, from my goals? Or am I just consume play blast, trickling down something that I found interesting? I'm always going to consume play blast, but I have to then work it to funnel it into directives that I have for myself. Um, And something Dave and Shan told me to do was to go on walks. And I actually already do that a lot. Uh, I love working out problems on walks. And so I don't think that walks are a place where I can quite access my sleep. Okay, I wanna jump out for one second and then come back to that thought. So my husband, you typed him last, uh, you typed him, you talked to him last week. Yes. Um, yes. And he is also asleep last. And he has, he, you really got him thinking about a lot. And we had some really good conversations. And um, so he is, just because I want to talk about his type, he's S-E-T-E, play, consume, blast, double masculine. So he was telling me that he kind of sees how he accesses his sleep as this sort of double path from a fulcrum. Like like he's S-E-T-E up top. And so that's play. He's consumed second. And he feels like when he goes down into consume, he kind of accesses his sleep a little bit there. He consumes, says, okay, does this have value to me? Yeah, sure. And I can take that into the future with me. That's his sleep, right? And then he'll come back up around and then he can blast, sort of be making a thing better, right? He, he's very corrective. He's an engineer. And, you know, his functions are very good for that. And he makes things better. And then he'll also dip down to his sleep and say, okay, do I value how I want to make this thing better, right? So it's like he kind of like easily double dips. Even though sleep is his last priority, he feels like he kind of reaches down from both sides. <clears throat> and for me, so it's only been a week. I think I actually also go down from both sides, but because I'm so lopsided, 
I, I do do this sort of consume sleep. It's like I can reach the sleep from my consume. It's like I can come to these conclusions and then kind of look at my known and be like, yeah, okay, that makes sense with my known, sure. But in order to go down the consume play blast, it's like I have to go down this whole, like all my animals down and then try to also get to my sleep there, right? And that's what I was saying. It's like, I'm very creative. I'm very hardworking and whatever, but it's all for nothing if I'm not directing that down a path. If I'm not able to scoop that into what, like something that I'm trying to build, right? And so that's something I've really been thinking about lately and trying to access from both sides. And it's hard because I have, like, I found I really have to go down the play blast. I have to go talk to people about something. I have to go punch on things, or at least I can go and kind of play blast onto my computer or into my phone too. And just like, blah, 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 type it all out, right? It's like, I have to go down all this work to access the sleep from the other side. And so, that's something that I'm very recently trying to open up to. But I do find there's kind of this double sense. There's being able to access my priorities, which I can do if I kind of already have them set up. But there's this sort of tidying up after myself as well. And, and even being able to do that somewhat in the moment instead of just being like a consume play blast crazy pants monkey <laughs> all the time so does that make sense yeah i think for for your sleep i think i think like since we started the interview i think you know like being st clear is going to be definitely like the, your biggest life challenge and also <laughs> I think also, um, I think if you do use sleep, I think the biggest challenge is because you have feminine SI. So when your TI is finally ready to sort through, you know, all your, um, you know, known in, known facts and information, like you're not really sure what you archive because it's feminine, right? So it's like, uh, like now what, you know, because like the TI is ready to do the work, but then now it's like, I don't know what I'm looking for, you know? So it's like, yeah, that's, that's like yeah. the, the real challenge there. Um, because, um, like for example, I have, um, I'm like you and, and, uh, Parker, I have a sleep last also like you guys. Um, but my sleep last is double masculine. Right. So like when, when I got my official typing back, they actually told me I can use my sleep, even though it's fourth and, and it's possibly because I have double masculine sleep. I've also like purposely done a lot of stuff that puts me in freak out mode when I was like, you know, younger, like not younger, but like as I got older. So I don't know if that like forced me to use it, but like, I don't know. They said that I could use it. Uh, so maybe having that double masculine uh, asleep, like yeah. that, that does help access that stuff because, you know, SI masculine would like kind of be like, okay, um, I, rem I remember the stuff that happened and now I can use my masculine FI to sort through it, right? But it has to be conscious because it's like sleep last, right? So I have to like practice it. It's not like, it doesn't come natural. So I have to like, set aside time to do it. So I think like for you and Parker, you guys have to like do the same thing as me, like set aside time to do it. Cause it's like tough, right? Like for you, you need to, you need to write it down. I think because like, yes, because you're, if your SI is feminine, then you can't see it in your brain. Right. So you actually have to like journal, I think like write it down. Otherwise you can't see it. You know? Yeah. So true. Yeah. So do, you, do you have like a massive amount of notes taken or like nothing or like no <laughs> notes? Like let's, let's say you consume something. These are all things I've been working on in the past couple of years. But do you, do you go over them? That's the thing. Do you like? Yes, yes, I do. And that is my attempt at consume sleep and building. And actually, I only, so all of these were a chaotic mess until, um, sorry, thank you for allowing me to peacock there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, of course. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, that I just, I just put all that together in September and October, because that stuff was all everywhere. And I had started kind of using binders, but there was no organization. So um, yeah, it, it's still a work in progress, obviously. But yes, I have to keep notes. And yes, I have to look back over them. And it's very important. And the thing is, too, what's the most important is and what I'm training myself to do is 
as I write notes, I try to circle or highlight or bold the key words and the most important things. So otherwise there's way too much to go back over. Like, you know, I'm just like, oh gosh, I can't, I don't have all the time in the world to like look back through all of this. But in order to make it accessible again, in order to make it so that it's already kind of a self catalog, right? And as I build this too, there's already a place for me to put that note right to fit it in so then when i have a note and i'm like okay wait this is a good note i can go to that binder i can put it in and i can check it with what i have there and it's very important it's still a work in progress though actually getting myself to do it and to do it well but that's what i'm working on right now yeah you know you said that you were just peacocking there but actually i think i don't think it's peacocking i think i think you just demonstrated with very good finesse how a double observer like really functions you know like <laughs> like as, as, as a double decider like i'm looking at what you just did right like you know you gather some information and then you organize them into notes yeah. into your binders well i do have yeah. a i do have a, a word document in my computer with all my known information and facts but I probably do that organization like once every two or three years, you know, it's just horrible, you know, and I don't go over my notes yeah. enough. Like when I actually do, I'm like, Oh, I feel, I feel good. Cause like, Oh, cause I remember the stuff that I actually need to do or information that I forgot about. But you know, like you just showed how easy it is for you as a double observer to like, Oh yeah. You know, I had some information. I'm still a chaos monkey, but Hey, look, look at all my binders. And I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> like, I, can't, I don't have a, I don't have a, like, I don't have that stuff. You know, it's terrible. Like, so it's, I think. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So I think like any double decider watching this could be like, oh, so that's how you do it. So you gather the information and then you write them on binders or any, any place that you can, you know, archive them. You know? Like, it's like, oh, thanks for a reminder. And then even though you, you just reminded us how to do that, we're probably not going to do it anyways. You know, because like, it's a complete <laughs> Um, we're like, that's a good idea, but you know, obviously we're not going to do it, you know, um, but so no, it's so true. My husband, when I do that for us, cause I do it for him and me and our projects. And he's like, you know, this is for you, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's for me. For us. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, <laughs> do, do you think because you have done very uh, you're getting cut out are you there i'm sorry there's a bit of chopping to like make sure here, but video your video froze oh, okay there we go i think it's coming back now okay awesome it's back okay uh, so um my, my question okay. I, I can see the monitor though but okay but, yay okay yeah, no, I was Oh um, wait, okay, if I do this, is it gonna like mess everything up? Can I can I do this? No, I can't. I'm sorry, I'm causing you so much sensory chaos right now. Yeah, no, it's fine, it's fine. It's is this okay? Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, I can see you, it's just the, the monitor is in the corner, but it's okay, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> no worries. Um, so, because you have double feminine, or sorry, not double feminine, um, you have double activated FE, do you feel like as a result of having double activated FE that you have a little bit less people problem than a typical IP, you know, like, do you feel like, you know, like, are you good at like making sure that everyone's feeling nice, you know, like everything's feeling comfortable? Okay. Like, that is, uh, okay. So Bill Gates is me, but, consume sleep play right and then Stephen Hawking is me but consume play sleep I would love to go peer at their lives and how it was for them in their teens and their 20s I think there's differences and it's hard for me to say one is harder than another because I see the difficulties in both because like you said and my husband has pointed this out to me and Dave pointed this out to me too it's like I since I've had play blast, since I've had this double activated FE, it's like I've always wanted to get along with people. It's been such an important thing to me. My parents even told me, like, when you were a kid, you were always all about your friends. You know what I mean? 
And I don't mean that just a peacock because like, you know, they also tell me like, oh, and you would go off by yourself for days, you know? So like I had this weird thing, but people were always such a big part of like what I wanted to have. And I wanted people to like me and I wanted people to feel good because it's something I'm using all the time. But then it's hard because as a kid, you don't understand that you're this kind of masculine lead TI asshole. And so um, what was really hard for me was to build relationships, right? To actually have more of the control side of it. So like, I'm really good at getting people to like me up front. Yes, that's natural that I've seen since I was a kid. When I meet someone, I can usually get them to like me, you know, and it's important too to not be super unhealthy about that and just try to get everyone to like you, right? Um, but yes, I have that. But then to maintain a relationship, I was not good at that. And that was something I wanted so bad. But like, you know, I didn't have the, the control side of it. And two, I didn't understand that I could really NT punch people, right? Just come out masculine NT. Say something really rude and inappropriate, right? Not not prioritizing the SF at all. Now, I have thought about this and wondered how, how would that have manifested for Bill Gates and um, Stephen Hawking or whoever, Elon Musk, any of them really, Sam Harris even, right? He's like lead sleep. Um, not Sam Harris though, let's stay to the lead consumed. But like for them, it's like people are going to respect more that they have a strong sense of self and they'll have priorities and they would have still been able to sort of perhaps come from a place of, okay, I'm going to build this relationship. Right. I imagine they, and they're not just like, Oh my God, let's please everyone. Okay. Bye. Like, you know, like I am. And then people are like, Whoa, that was fun. Wait, where are you? Who are you? You're also kind of a dick and that's weird. But like someone say consume sleep play might come out and be like, yeah, I'm a bit of a dick, but here's who I am. Okay, let's work together, right? And they still would have had to have worked on their FE, but they would have come at it from a different direction and had different problems. But FE is still a demon for both of us um, and still issues on both sides, in my opinion. Gotcha. I've always uh, gotten along with INTPs a lot. Like uh, growing up, I have a lot of INTP friends, like one of my best friends in INTP actually. Um, he also oh, met cool. he also met Dave actually um, when we uh, went to to um, to Seattle. He had a meetup, so that's where I met uh, that's where I met uh, Dave, Shan, and like a bunch of other people from the class. Um, cool. So that that was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, one of my like I've always I don't know I've always got, like maybe the NE maybe like even I work in the fitness industry, so I've always had INTP clients too, and you know. <laughs> They're obsessed with talking about people, which is, I think, Oh, great. cool. That's awesome. I never thought about it, like, you know, like, that IPs love talking about people. Like, people, people, people. Like, you know? Like, <laughs> the, 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 the people game? <laughs> yeah, no, I never, I never re noticed it until, like, Dave and Shan talked about it. Like, you know, EJs and IPs are obsessed with people, while EPs and um, IJs are obsessed about things. And I was thinking, and then now that, you know, like, now that I know about it, I can't unsee it now, right? So like when I go to work, I'm like, oh, this client is definitely like a, a double decider because this person is freaking about things. Things, 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 things. You know, you know. Like if, <laughs> if I have like an IJ, if I have an IJ client. Like, yeah. Like I, have a, I have a super annoying IJ client right now. Um, he's like an ISTJ. Um, sleep first, obviously. Like, my God, he keeps saying, I don't want to change anything. I like the way I do things right now and I'm not going to change anything. Like he, he absolutely hates change and, you know, I freaks out about like things, you know, he's like, oh, there's bad traffic, like freaking about traffic, freaking about like, <laughs> you know, when, when, then when I see an EJ or IP, then they're freaking about things like, you know, like my, I had an IP um, client before who was an INTP. Uh, he was a bank manager and he was saying like, oh, this person's an idiot. This person's an idiot. This person's an idiot. Like everyone that he works with are idiots, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, my husband, like, my husband as an observer, he'll get, like, so annoyed at a coworker or something, 
And then um, let's just say a coworker's named Bob, because I don't think anybody he works with is actually named Bob. But he'll like be complaining about it, and I'll be like, oh yeah, Parker hates Bob. And he's like, no, I don't hate them. <laughs> like, let me be very clear, this is not, do you just get in my way? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. No, this is not the you, me game. This is just the person as an obstacle. <laughs> Yeah, but then I was looking at the powers of the double observer, right? Like, you guys are so fluid with that, like, gather, organize, gather, organize, gather, organize. Like, a lot of the people that I know that are really good in business are, you know, single um, deciders because they're so good at, you know, gather, organize, gather, organize, you know. Um, like, what am All I... the people on Shark Tank, pretty much, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, one of my, one of my best friends is, uh, he's an ENFJ, and then his... No surprise, his fiance is an INFP. Like, there's no surprise that you know an EJ and IP would end up dating, right? Yeah. Um, and they're, they're both oh, yeah. so good at like gathering, organize, gather, organize. But then, then later on, they figure out what people. Yeah. Like that, my EJ friends like, oh, why are people being selfish? You know. And then the IP, her, her, his IP um, fiance is is an asshole, right? Like she's very like condescending and like you know, <laughs> like I was like, oh. like, you make up, like, it's, like you try to make it a stereotype, but it's not. It's real, right? It's like. <laughs> but then you make better understanding people too. I'm like, I don't think she's a bad person. I think she just doesn't know that she's coming up across as an asshole. Oh, yeah. people, you know, because like she'll go up to a group of people. It's like, does anyone here actually have a brain? You know, like it's like, uh, <laughs> you know. Oh, and it's demon te right? Because she's like, come on, can't you guys like do yeah, the gap, masculine, right? Doesn't masculine. everyone have a brain? That's such like a Demon TE. Yeah, yeah and it's masculine TE too, right? So it's a demon and it's, and it's masculine. Oh, you know, wow. she, like she's yeah. very big in the fashion industry, right? It's like she's very good at like designing, Im like image. Yeah. So definitely, you know, like FM, right? Like ma feminine, masculine. So yeah, yeah like she, I was like, I was like, oh, I think she's going to rub up, rub people the wrong way. But call people like, you know, like, like saying that. That's like such a condescending thing to say, right? You know, I'm a, I'm a double decider, right? So I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't think personally, but like if someone else was there, I would, assume that they would be like pissed off right right and it, i think like the cool thing about like this yeah movie, <laughs> it's like like when, when i when i learned i was a double decider i was like wait a minute i've been trying to start my business and every time i have a business coach it's always like an ij right so they're always telling me to organize stuff and i'm getting stressed out right and then i'm like wait a minute <laughs> why don't i just like hire people because like if i'm a double decider that means i would be good at handling people so I started going to Fiverr and like hiring okay. people for my work. And I was like, oh my God, this is like, this is like, I'm pretty good at this shit. And then I, I have a friend who's an EJ who hired people on Fiverr and everything's like, like everything's falling apart. Right. And I was uh -huh. like, oh, I see now what's happening. If you're a double decider, then you need to handle people. Cause you're <laughs> gonna, like, if, if you're like an EP or IJ, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be the one gathering or organizing, actually. Even though you're the best, like EP would be the best at, or, at gathering and IJ would be the best at organizing. Those people shouldn't probably be doing that. They should be doing the people stuff, like management or support role. While, yeah. the, while the IP or EJ should actually not be doing the people stuff. Like the EJ should not be the manager. They should be doing like the, you know, like the, the, the gathering and the organize. Because, you know, you guys are balanced with that stuff, right? Like for you guys, it's like yeah. fluid. Like it's like, yeah, yeah, we can do it all day, you know? yeah yeah so although barbara cochran i mean she manages people a lot right isn't that what she's always saying that she's all about the people and figuring them out um sorry that, that that's my ti there trying to you know no no worries it's such a shark tank person that... yes yes she's an enfj oh yeah i guess i guess for her it's okay i don't know like i'm just 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 saying like i i've noticed that a lot of ips end up being managers right and then like yes and you know what? I agree. I, I had, you know, I, I definitely see many examples that that's just my mind. I'm sorry. That's, that's my mind is a devil's advocate. I see many examples that follow what you're saying. My mind just tends to always try to find that one that breaks it. That's my TI, but I definitely see what you're saying on a grand scale. I agree. Hardcore yeah. and certainly should not put me in charge of a big team until maybe I'm in my forties and maybe I'll have like, gotten better at all my functions or something isn't that what Dave and Shan say by the time you're in your 40s you're much better at all your functions so maybe then I could potentially be better at something like that but certainly me in my 20s <laughs> yeah well I mean yeah that they said that in your 40s that's when your life 
actually starts because then that's when you yeah. i mean not everyone ever does but like you know a lot of people eventually learns that oh my god i need to stop doing i, I need to learn how to use my fourth one because if right. i don't use my fourth function my life is going to be messed up yeah. uh, with that being said i do think ips would be good as leaders i'm saying management is i, I don't think management and leadership are the same thing though like like if you were because oh, okay. if you were the CEO of a company, then you can dictate the direction where your company is going to go, but you don't necessarily have to manage the people underneath you, right? You know? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I don't, yeah, know yeah. That, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. I get you. Yeah, yeah I think no, it. Like Bill Gates know the direction where Microsoft should have went, and he did. He did an awesome job, right? You know, right. And, it, he left, and you know, it became terrible. So clearly he had, <laughs> so he had to, uh, to make it good, right? Um, yeah. You know, yeah. he didn't necessarily manage a day-to-day, -day, like, task, right? He, he was more of a visionary person, right? So that, that's all kind of, like, say, like, maybe an EJ would be the worst at being the visionary, you know? Cause, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Although they would, they would always want to work towards that, I imagine, right? Yeah, but yeah. unless maybe it's an older EJ, like a, in, someone in their 40s or 50s, then maybe it's, by then it's, it's, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. if you look at, like, Dana White from UFC, you know, obviously he did an amazing job with the company, right? So... So it's like, it's not, it's not so black and white in that case. It's like, I actually don't know who that is. Oh, he's the UFC um, president, you know, UFC. Oh, okay. And what's his, what's his uh, type? Uh, I think they typed him as an ENTJ. I think. Okay. If it was a recent class, um, I haven't, because of my honeymoon, I haven't. I, I, class I, in I, it. I don't think they did a class on him. I think they just mentioned that they typed him as an ENTJ. Oh, okay. okay. Like okay. in one of their like videos somewhere, I don't know, I don't remember which one. I just I watch all of them. I just don't remember which one. <laughs> oh really? No, 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 no. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So he's an ENTJ and he runs the UFC and he, uh, what did he do? Uh, well, it was like it was a company that no one took seriously when it first came, and so when um the com when when this company um bought. The original company so there's a they have a an umbrella company you could say yeah. um, i forget the name of the umbrella company i think it was called zufa or something but anyways it's not important um disrespecting the sensory here but like uh, <laughs> uh, no, i'm fine uh, with that <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyways you know he had the vision that this is gonna be the next big thing for you know the fight sport and and it was it is it's it's getting so big right now it's i i, I believe it at some point it's gonna Ooh. open um boxing right um yeah. so, so he definitely had that vision and, and um, like, like for me personally, like the lesson that I learned from him, cause um, he, um, he had an interview with uh, Tony Robbins, right? And uh, you know, he was talking to, talking to Tony Robbins. Oh, he, he actually li used to listen to personal power too. I don't know if you heard, you know that like Tony Robinson's like audio, audio program. Anyway. So like, and it doesn't matter. Like, so, so anyways, the, the point that he was saying was like, like, which I thought was super cool was like, Oh, so, so he said that before he got into the fight industry, he decided to work in the fight industry and like, you know, he did every single possible position within the fight industry. Like he was the referee, he was a trainer. Uh, I think he did some sales, mm -hmm. like he pretty much had every single hat. I think he said that there was mm -hmm. only never held. So by the time he started the company, not, not started, like took over the company, he already knew what was happening in every single like department in that organization right so mm -hmm. so if, like for me the biggest lesson for me was like oh i see like if if, if you want to like run an organization then you need to immerse yourself in every single facet of that organization mm -hmm. by the time you you lead it you understand everything that's happening you know yeah yeah so i, I think we went off yeah. tangent, off tangent here but that's the kind of oh no i'm sorry i'm I'm, very, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll consume. I'm, yeah. No, that's very cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's just kind of like the, Sorry, yeah, like that's kind of like just what my any picked up, like just watching that because I was like, wow, that's super cool. I was like, now I was like, because I have FI, right? So I'm kind of thinking about my life now and I'm like, oh my God, I need to change I think careers because I, if I want to be, because I, I have a travel blog, I work in a fitness industry and I've been there for seven years, but I was like, if I want to be good in the travel industry, I need to get rid of the fitness job and start immersing myself in all the different facets 
um, in the travel industry. So I can be like Dana White, you know, like he's like the perfect double observer who like, you know, learn everything, all the sensory stuff that's happening in the company. And then now he's the big boss. So he, he knows how to organize the, the, the company um, to make it work. Right. So, yeah. And, and you could tell. He loves it. Sorry, go ahead. And I'm just saying like, you can tell he likes it too. So like, I think, I feel like he's a good example of like, um, like a well-developed um, single decider. Cause like he also loves the sport. Right. So there's like his FI is attached to it. So I'm kind of curious from like an, an IP perspective because you guys don't have FI. So is it similar, more similar to um, what's that guy's name? Cal Newport or something? Or like, like, or what? Is that, is that his last name? I forgot. Like that. I don't, he, I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, I think this, I think they just did a class on him. He's, um, um, and, and, and on the class, he was like, a, you become so good at something that you become passionate about it. So like, I'm just wondering if that's how it works for someone that has TI, you know, like, would you have to immerse yourself in like in a few fields that you really enjoy that it to, to the point where that becomes a passion or like, how, how does that work for, for you? Like, what, what are you into, for example, like, like besides op? You know? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. There's a lot here. Um, and first off, I love how you're, you're not only, it's not only your NE, but paired with the TE, you break down everything. So like in its practicality, right? I mean, you're, and you've yeah. seen all the possibilities, but it's the practicality of it too, right? right. I'm TI, not as good at practicality. TI can be practical. I'm an especially impractical one, um, but I appreciate that. And okay, so do I have to really like a thing? Yes. In fact, with me, it is very much a problem and has been a big problem in my life. Um, where I do very much have to be passionate about it. I think it manifests a bit different than FI. It doesn't come from this deep inner place. Yeah. I don't see this deep inner place and then that springs me to do a thing. Right. It's more like as I'm going, I, I, you know, the vibes or what have you like, um, so I've been watching a lot of shark tanks. So you mentioned a lot of EJs and I've been watching a lot of shark tank because of Dave and Sham, because they typed Barbara and Robert and, um, uh, they said, Mark, they didn't type him in a video, but they said his in another one. And then I think I know what Kevin is and I have a guest for Lori, but like, you know, I've been focusing mostly on Mark and, uh, Barbara as a very interesting perspective on FE, but even they as lead FE, right? Mark Cuban, they're both ENFJs. Mark Cuban is masculine on the FE. Barbara's feminine. Actually, she's double feminine. He's double masculine, but they both talk about passion as a very important thing. They're kind of looking externally. Mark Cuban likes to see passion in people, right? As they're going through it. And Barbara also likes to see passion. She is like, she really wants to push on the passion, right? Mark Cuban's very like, I want to see your passion and then we can talk, right? It's very like, I have a masculine F, you should have a masculine F and then we can meet. <laughs> right. Whereas Barbara's like, I want to see your passion and I want to kind of like play with it because I can do that. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so somewhere in there, like, you know, it's double activated and it's play blast. So it's like both all in at once. Like I really like want to like what I'm doing. Um, so my passion, so what I do outside of objective personality, um, is, uh, I'm actually, I'm trying to write a book, which, um, and my whenever I do my sleep work on it, whenever I looked inward and I was like, why do I want to put this out into the world? You know, Dave and Shan have, you know, I've been working on my sleep and that was one of the things they were like, ask yourself that kind of question. And when I look inward, I 
want to touch the hearts of people. Like maybe my book could touch others. Even if I only engaged 10 people, say on the book I wrote, yeah. I would feel like it was so powerful. <laughs> right? I, um, so, yeah. I'm, I'm curious. Go ahead. Look, so <laughs> uh, try, try to be a little bit, uh, not devil's advocate, but like just curious. Please do. It's very, very curious. Okay, you're very NT, mm -hmm. but you want to produce SF. <laughs> so, um, oh, of course, right? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm curious to see how you, you're going to turn the NT to SF. Like, what's, like, what is your plan to do that? Just, just out of curiosity, this is very inter fascinating to me. So, oh, not at all. So, first off, I want to say John Green is my cognitive twin. Do you know who John Green is? I, I don't. That's okay. He is a YouTuber who, um, I actually didn't know him. I think he started on YouTube from Vlog Brothers. Um, so he started vlogging forever ago and I, you know, not into the vlog world. I feel like, you know, IP like the, I'm like, yeah, I don't like to get out of the tribe that much, <laughs> but I mean, you know, whatever, especially younger Julie. Um, but I knew him from Crash Cross world history, but he's actually written since then many fiction books um which are well received by quite a number of people like if you know people who are into fiction many of them like you know i talk to people and they know who john green is i actually haven't even read his books myself and part of me now that i know he's my cognitive twin i'm almost nervous to him like i don't know like i want to write mine in a free space where i haven't analyzed the crap out of my cognitive twins book and then maybe like after I've written a couple, go look at his and then compare. But it is, my point is, it is possible my cognitive twin has done it. So that gives me a little bit of faith in myself. Um, that being said, I'm not saying it's not easy. Um, I have written many scenes and short story thing items. And I love giving those out to people and sending those out. And for me, I again, I feel like actually so much of the big problem is that I also have the sleep less. Um, because I, my big vision, the, the stories that I've been writing for the past, let's see, this, I started it, I had the very first dream for one part of the story, like in 2012 or something like that. And I've been writing these things since. And I have, like I said, many scenes that I've completed, but building them all into one framework, that is my major struggle. You know, a scene, I can take that and I can make it better and I can build it, but to try to put in multiple scenes that they grow as a whole, um, that's something I'm actually working on right now. Um, and I, I'm gonna make this into a book. But I had to hard stop myself this summer and be like, I can't get the structure down. So the summer I spent studying structure, right? Go to my saviors. And this fall, I'm trying to build the way that I can do this. Because I have to trick my mind. Because I'm not going to all sleep a lot more than I have it. So how I'm trying to trick it is find an easy way to set myself up so that I can do the sleep work as I go. So that I can be throwing it into the structure and have an easy reference to look at. So I, I'm building the place, right? And here I'm getting really feminine sensory pride, but I'm trying to build this framework so that as I work on this theme, I can be pulling from there, throwing into here, and then I have that framework because I'm not gonna go and stop and spend a week building this framework as much as I want to. I just can't sleep that much. So that's what I'm working on now. And I told myself that if I don't have this framework by 2020, you know, if you shake it more than twice, you're playing with it, then I'm probably just playing with it. And then I need to follow my effort elsewhere and see what this really is. But I think that I can do it and I want to see. And my husband being TE, I really like to take it to him. Because like you said, right? Observers, you guys are great managers. <laughs> I totally use my husband as kind of a manager. I take this to him like, okay, you think I'm actually making progress? You think this is actually worthwhile? Like yeah. I definitely go to him and I'm like, yeah. please be my check because I can be in crazy la la land all the time. Yeah. Just turning my engines and kind of going nowhere. I totally can do that. So yeah. 
please be devil's advocate. The more people check me, the better. <laughs> because I pee too, right? I don't go out into the world enough to look and see if what I'm doing is going to work for the world. I, I feel like the best way to like brainwash yourself to like learning the structure um, and connecting different scenes together in a book is by simply copying what the INFPs do. It's like, you know, the, the popular authors like, um, you know, um, what's his name, J.R.R. Tolkien. You know, like you can read all Lord's Ring books because he has like a massive, he has like a massive world. He created a massive world, right? With different scenes and different stuff happening at one time, yet it all ties together. So, you know. Okay, no, no, let me, let me, okay, let me, I definitely, I really appreciate this chance to talk about it because the more I play Blast it, the better I can explain it. And I don't get an opportunity to explain this in this detail that often. Okay, sure. When I read, when I read books, I easily understand their structure. And also, okay. as I'm writing, I easily come up with structures. The problem is those structures disappear. They fade, right? I have this feminine SI, a feminine, like, and they just, they get lost. And then I continue moving forward and I'm like, wait, where did the structure that I built go? You know, and like I said, I can easily, I mean, I can deconstruct stories, but it's a completely different thing to deconstruct it and to understand how it was built than it is to actually build something yourself and to keep it so feminine SI. <laughs> so feminine SI. As I brought like creative tangents, there are problems. Oh, I see. Because you have double feminine. Does that make blast. sense? Yeah, you have double feminine blast also. So like building is going to be like the super hard and, uh, Yes. Oh, well, I mean, you, you kind of answered your, your, your question already because earlier you said you need to write it down, right? So why don't you draw pictures to, to organize the structure, you know? Like, oh, yeah. Like, like, don't even have anything written. Just have pictures, right? Like, this is scene one. This is this scene. This is this scene. This is this world. And it has to be all written. And you need to have, like, a giant, like, poster board. And you need to put it by your, by your, by your uh, I don't know, by your wall so you can see it. Like, you <laughs> actually, I already I have the poster boards. And I'm actually, that's, that is part of what I'm doing. Yay. <laughs> so oh, yeah, that's go. good. That's good. Yeah, you got it. Because okay. I actually am doing that. Because each main uh, storyline person, like, I want to have the poster for it, for the inspirations. Um, like, I mean, I'd love to, I mean, if you would want to, <sighs> the thing is, too, I don't want to go much more into what I'm building. Because, like I said, it's, not in a space where I can ST talk about it very well. Um, yes. I need to really wash it through the ST play mind of my husband a few more times until it's actually like a bit flushed more into reality. But yeah, the poster board is a thing and it's, it's about having something that I can go reference with the structure. Like, and that's the thing, I can put these structures down all the time, but to have that one, solid thing that I'm going back to and building on and where that's kept and where I can while while having the creative space also having the tracking space I'm really trying to build a tracking space that is intuitive and makes sense that my saviors will actually be fine using <laughs> when they're creating <laughs> if that makes sense yeah I know it does um <laughs> You, you know, you have masculine NE, right? So, like, I noticed that, like, my, I, I think my friend's fiance, the, the IP, who's kind of, a, like, says content sending stuff to people, I think she has masculine and like, I think she has masculine NE also, and I think it's a demon, like, I think she's uh -huh. a jumper kind. So, so like, she's FSI, uh-huh. I think so. Um, she's very SF, so, that, I mean, that would make sense. But, like, uh, when, when, still black there. when she's using her NE, it's so weird, right? Like, she'll put, like, She'll take a wall and she'll put her ideas in like, I don't know, like, I don't know, some kind of card or some kind of piece of paper and she'll put in a wall and she'll physically like, like not take a wire, but like take like a, some, like a string and like to, to link them together. Right. So there's like a, so like the NE like has a physical link to it. And then I was thinking to myself, yeah, that's so, that's so weird. Like that's not how you use any, it's like, for us, it's like automatic. Right. Like, especially if it's a savior, it's just like, you know, like you can link no problem. Right. You don't need to put like a string beside be, between them yeah strings actually i know like i see that like in bones or csi or like shows like that right when they yeah. would do that or you know they they find the killer and he has all these yeah. things yeah <laughs> and, 
yeah and I've always thought that's so cool and yeah I would love to understand how that helps because I definitely like this thing that I showed you earlier this is on my wall I do definitely like like to write stuff down and stick it up on my wall yeah but I like a bit more of the chaos I, I don't try to connect them that doesn't quite work for me have you tried putting a string between like your ideas or like your structure I know right I don't understand what the string represents no it's, it's just it's just like a it's just a visual cue right because you're 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 double feminine so um you know you're gonna be like tester and visual right so visual is gonna help you a lot like if, especially if you can see it right yes yes yeah because even even though it's in your head i don't think it's the same as if you saw it with your eyes right so right but i feel like my nf play is like everything's connected yeah or something like i'm trying to i'm trying to like understand like i feel like the string is something that doesn't quite help me in my mind because trust me i am yeah i'm very visual i'm always drawing things out i always build diagrams like here okay i can show you i'm not gonna let me sh i probably shouldn't show this i'm gonna show it play blast me okay so <laughs> <laughs> this is this is me working on the thing i was talking about oh nice yeah so there's a visual to it. I'm just showing it though. I'm not gonna explain it because, like I said, you be prepared for some NF play if you want to get into that. It's not gonna make sense right now. But like, that's kind of the visual work up towards how I'm trying to trick my mind. It's it, the one part in there was how my mind wants to move, and then I'm trying to build these interruptive programs that are still somewhat natural naturally occurring in my brain around them from how my brain can shift and move. Yeah. All right. But no strings. <laughs> no, no strings. Yeah, no worries. No strings, no worries. I just <laughs> no, all right. Was it no strings attached? <laughs> yeah. Um I think we already covered everything today. I don't know. Like we covered your feminine F E your S I N E T I. Um, do you have anything that you want to mention that we forgot to talk about today? I think we, like, I think we covered everything already. Like all the bases when it comes to your your type, you know. Uh, you def you definitely have a very interesting type. Like, it, like I think it was super obvious that you have you, you have the play blast crack crackhead like like stuff happening. Like that was that was that was like super, yeah that was super obvious. Like you can't you can't hide that. It's like. <laughs> I know. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I already want to play blast off of that, but I, I won't do that. Yeah, no, it's and it's dangerous for me to like talk to you. Um because I also play blast. So it's gonna be yeah, like Yeah, and we can just like do this. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like a it's like a dangerous loop, right? Cause it's, it's gonna be like crackhead land, right? Like cause Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so my last question to you, Julie, or I, I have two last questions for you then. Um okay. First question is like, what have you done that you think other INTPs can also get better at? Because you've, or, you've actually done something very interesting here is that because for you, it, you, you, you want to like people and you want people to like you. And as a result, you've gotten a chance to use your fourth function. You've gotten more repetition into it than the typical INTP, just because of your attitude towards it, right? So what kind of advice would you give to other INTPs who's having like people problems? Or maybe, maybe it's not even people problems, but they think people are, are a nuisance and they, wanna, they want people to just, you know, just, you, know, you know, F off, you know, like, and like, like, like leave them alone in their consumed sleep land, you know? Like what, what kind of advice would you give them to kind of say otherwise that yes, getting along with people and working with people is a good thing. Yes. Um, let me get a drink of water really quick. It's right here. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess I would just, uh, yeah, for me, play blast is a story. So, so, a succinct piece of advice but my story with entering being able to do that well 
No matter who you are, you have to, in my opinion, you have to use your saviors to, in order to convince yourself to go and use your demons, right? Um, so whenever I was in my 20s, I definitely spent a long space of time where I would hardly go out into the world and open up to people and let people in. And that was a really dark time. And, um, but I had to learn as a rule, like my TI though did save me. But as a rule, I was like, I looked out and I was like, man, but you know, if, <laughs> you know, I thought everyone was wrong and lead masculine TI, that's what we tend to see wrong 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 and sure there's a lot of wrongness but you know I also looked out and saw that um like that you know if you're the only one what's what's the phrase it's like if you're if you think everyone around you is crazy then you're the crazy one right yeah, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that that hit me back when I was in my 20s and, you know, I was better than everyone or whatever. That's how it's perceived and that is the truth of it. But to me, in how I felt about it, I was like, no, everybody's always making mistakes and I'm making mistakes and we need to all stop doing that. And it's just crazy savior masculine TI land. But it's like, I looked out and I'm like, everybody's out there making mistakes all the time and they're moving on from it. What am I doing? I'm the crazy one. Like, I'm a crazy one in this one because I'm the one who's all alone while everybody else is like mingling and doing things. Um, and I had to, I, I found, I think she's an ESTJ. I think my friend, Diana, is my guess for her is T-E-S-I, Blast Lead Play, something, but she's definitely Lead Tribe and has, and Lead Blast, um, you know, but I found a friend who I saw her and I was like, she, this girl, I was like, this girl is so good at people. She's so good at considering them and understanding them and working with them. And this girl doesn't like me. <laughs> like, she does not like me. And you know, she probably has good reason. And I just went over and I would just talk to her and I would just be like, I really do care. And she would be like, wait, you're an asshole, basically, right? I'm summing it up. And I was like, no, but I, I'm, I care. I was like, can you work with me on this and explain to me where I'm coming, like where, where I'm, like what, how I'm wrong and how you're perceiving this. And if there's anything I could do to improve, right? And she really respected that. And I probably didn't even say it that well. But you know, there were a few times of this because then I would do something else that would piss her off. And I would say, Diana, like, I'm so sorry. Like, I care about you, right? Learning to say that. Like, I care about you. I'm not always good at showing it, but I care about you. And I wanna know what I can do. Even just saying that was like such a blossom, right? And then having her as a friend helped me blossom that much more and learn about what I could do. I had to badger her into friendship, <laughs> but we're still really good friends. I mean, that was like 10 years ago. So I guess learning to voice that from a true and deep place and admitting that you're wrong at the same time, because I think a lot of INTPs might might be prone. I'm sorry, are you still there? You're frozen. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're you're lagging. Okay, okay. I'm still here. okay. I think a lot of INTPs might do half of it. No, I like to engage with people. I like to. I do the FE. It's like really, are you really admitting you're wrong? And it's okay if your gut instinct, like mine, so often is, is <laughs> no. <laughs> My gut that has not stopped. My gut instinct is still nope, wrong. But just learning to also stop that and say, wait, maybe I should listen to their perspective. They have a different side to this. It's legitimate. It comes from who they are and their experiences. So, I mean, I don't know as many INTPs as you do, just seeing some on the internet, but that's definitely, that was a big part of my life story in being able to grow.
right so that might be what i would put out there to intps if that could help other people no that's that's really well said that was the that was amazing like you you went into your sleep and then you blasted it and it was such a good advice it was like such a good like uh-huh. it was such a good growth mindset advice i think for like ips you know who like like because you gave so many practical advice too right like you said you know yeah. like you know don't don't um like make sure you, you admit that you were wrong or at least mention that you're wrong you, maybe you don't feel that way inside but you know, mention that, <laughs> mention that you're wrong and acknowledge that you want to learn and just be open to it and i think that that's all it took right like and and i think the other good stuff that you said too was like you didn't do a good job doing it too but you still did it right so i think like that's the biggest takeaway here is like a lot of times like you don't actually have to do a good job doing your demons you just have to do it you know because yeah. like, and, and I think that's that just makes like a whole world of difference. It's just you just do it, right? Even if it's yeah. even if it's awful, like you were probably like super awkward, but people didn't. They probably probably didn't care. They probably just thought it was like, oh, that's so nice that you know, you you <laughs> you, you actually did that, right? Like yeah. you're the last person that they expected to do that. And then, yeah. and then, um, yeah, I think this is why like the INTPs get that reputation of being the mad scientists because they stay home and they become weird, right? Because they're all alone all the time instead of like like socializing with people. So I think, yeah, getting out more <laughs> is not a good advice, but like, uh, yes, get out every day, have some place public that you go every day. Yeah. That's probably a good advice. too. Yeah. And, you know, the weird thing is I, I actually, I never see IPs hang up with each other. I have never, I just don't see it. Like, like, like now that you mentioned, cause you, you said, yeah. I don't know any INTPs. I'm like, I don't think IPs generally hang up with each other. Like I just never, I've never seen it. Like I have a lot of IP friends, right? But I don't see those IP friends hanging with other IP people. Like I just, I would never see it. As a matter of fact, they usually don't like each other, you know? You know, it's so funny you say that because like this girl, Diana, that was actually one of her biggest beefs. Uh, now we're all friends, but this uh, a friend, Ariel, who I'm pretty sure is an INFP, Diana was like, you're so rude to her and whatever. I don't remember. But you know, like, um, Ariel and I did kind of like, we kind of were, I think a bit like, you know, it, it is, you hit some sort of wall, like you're too similar. This is the role that I fill or something. Yeah. I don't know. But actually like Ariel and I have grown in our, <laughs> there's always room to grow. Right. Yeah. But I will say it's not natural. And I do think it's because Ariel and I are a bit very similar and for right it kind of makes sense if you think about the ip it's so you know weird to say but it's like no but we fill the like the the ip role like i'm the ip here or whatever no but it's really on not <laughs> not a good place there can only be one ip do i have any other ip friends i actually think i have a, <laughs> i know like i'm the ip here <laughs> You know what though? I do also see EJs sometimes doing that too, right? They're like, I'm the EJ. No, I have seen a lot of EJs hanging with each other. But you do? Oh, okay. You, yeah, I, I believe you. I yeah, think no, I, I think EJs you with each other. are likely seeing it more than I am. Yeah, I know, because I I'm looking at my group of friends specifically, but like even in the past, like group of friends I've made. Nope, I've definitely seen EJs hang with each other. I've seen IJs hang with each other. Um, the IJs probably love hanging with each other because they're, they're, they're freaking each other out, right? They're like, hey, that, that bad thing can happen. They're like, oh, yeah, you're right. You know, it's like, they're just like, <laughs> like <laughs> getting each other paranoid, you know? <laughs> I can but, see but, like, but I can see like the IPs, if they hang out, they would be like, oh, this person's such, a, this person's such an asshole. You know, like then they're both, <laughs> it, right? And then little do they know, you're all assholes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh no i'm surrounded by assholes right? yeah. Baseballs. <laughs> yeah no but like, but like from, from an ep perspective i i love ips because ips are usually in generally like like i in my opinion ips are really good listeners like like just oh. like because because like i think ips are like like from what i've seen like gathering right so when you finally get a chance to talk to someone I think it's easier for them to like just hear what the person has to say than to like talk to actually talk to them, you know. You know, at least from my experience, you know, just hang oh. with IPs. Like the IPs are always like oh, totally, yeah. And then I think the cool thing about IPs is like they're always trying to like gather your identity, which I think is super cool. Like, 
like they'll go up to you, right? And they'll be like, so what, what have you been up to? And they're like really curious, right? They're like, they want to know what you're up to, right? Like, <laughs> I love the way you said that. I want to remember that. Gather your identity. Yes, I totally do that. Yeah, like regardless if it's TI or FI, right? Like they're like, so what are you doing? And then they're like, huh. And they're like really curious, right? You know, and it's, it's like genuine, right? And it feels good to like talk about it. Sometimes when I talk to EJs, right? They'll ask me that, but I know they don't care because they don't care about my identity. They want me to adhere to the, what the group wants to do, right? Like, no, yeah. no, no, no offense to the EJs, obviously, but like, this is like, this, this is a, a, what I noticed, right? I'm like, ah, what's the point of me telling you what I did, like on my vacation? Because I know you don't care. I know you're just saying, it, <laughs> I know you're just saying it to be polite. And then you're going to go back to like, what's societally, like, what's, group think acceptable right and i'm like uh, you know what but then with the i with the ip <laughs> like with the ips the weirder you are the better too they're like wow really <laughs> you know like like you know like you know like because the ip is like oh really? you know it's like uh <laughs> so true oh wait is that a weird place yeah let's go there i'm in <laughs> yeah because yeah, like i remember i was talking to an ip blogger he's a travel blogger right and he asked me like what i did and he'll just be sitting there listening to me, right? And I'm, I'm not really thinking, I was like, is he actually listening to me? Then like, then after we finish talking, right? He'll be like, I feel like you just influenced me. Like, I want to do all the stuff you just did. I'm like, you know, it's like, they, they took it in with yes. me, right? And they kind of pictured themselves in that situation already. Like, mm, would, yeah. I, would I like doing that? Would I enjoy doing that? It's like, you know, it's like, yes, yes, I would. You know, it's like, it's like, you're tempting me, you know, like it's, you know? You know, so it's like, I was like, huh, it's like really, that, that's why I like, I, I think, I think, the, I think the worst one is like the, the feminine FI IPs, you know, cause like they have feminine FI, right? So their identity is movable. So every, anything that people tell them is like acceptable, you know, which is like so weird, right? Cause then that, they're just like so easily influenced, right? You know, I actually don't think I have like. I'm, I, there's no one in my life that is for sure a feminine FIIP that I know. I do have INFPs in my life, but I do think, but I don't know, maybe some of them Parker. must be. I actually feel like I know quite a bit of INFPs. Huh? Parker is feminine FI. Oh yeah, he is. But, but as an observer though, it's not that, it's not as feminine. Does that make sense? Well, he doesn't like to bring it out. <laughs> Like, I actually thought he had sleep because he, he just can be so sure. It, I don't know. I, I feel like he's not that FI movable, but maybe you see it better than I do. He feels, he, but to me too, it's this FI, it's still narrow. So it's still to me, I don't know. Do you, do you see him as FI movable then? I, no, I think Parker's TE is just so strong that he, it's hard to see that FI, you know? Cause That's even, true. Because even when I spoke to him, I'm like, okay, this guy's clearly double masculine, and he's definitely like, like you know, you know, he's like the tough guy, right? Like, you know, like, um, <laughs> so you know, g getting him to use that fi is gonna be like, I, I don't know if he if he wants to use it or not. I did notice that we, when we were talking, he, he, uh, he, he seems like he preferred not to talk about his feminine fi, you know. So I, I don't know if it's like, if there's any, oh. it's just like I don't know, it's just I kind of notice something like that so i'm like okay well i'm not gonna dig deep to it if he's like if he's uncomfortable bringing it up i just i just thought it was like okay let's not no that makes sense okay you know what? and this is what i forget too parker is a whole different person he's a little softy with me like i was actually a little surprised he was double masculine but but your te too can pick that up better i think because like then i look out and i'm like oh parker does kind of punch there and punch there and punch there but with me He's such a softy, and I guess that's probably his feminine fi, right? I probably get the feminine part of him. Well, I think. Him. Well, I mean, you know, you're 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 his wife, so I think you're one of the few people he'll probably show exactly. that fi. Like he'll probably show it to his to his yeah. parents, you know, probably his, like family members. But you know, if if you're not inside that double masculine wall, you're not gonna see it. I think that's gonna. I think that's gonna. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good way to put it too. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my last question to you is, I have functions that you don't have. Is there anything you want to learn about FI or TE? Because those are the two functions that we have that's different, that different you know, because we both have NE and SI, right? So. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, and I know, and it's, so, like you said, I mean, I take in constantly. So, I am good friends with Dallas, who is an ENFP. Yes, yes. So, I feel like I have a good feel for any ENFI with him. And as we've been talking, I have been noticing how you are more TE. You are looking more, comparing, and you're seeing very clearly, like, the functional comparisons, right? I mean, I feel like I'm getting a good feel for your NT play as you speak. Um, something with regards to the ENFP, though, that I think I could really ask about that does intrigue me is actually the blast, S-I-T-E of it. So yes. how do you feel that manifests? Um, I was officially typed as N-E-T-E, play, blast, consume, sleep, masculine, feminine. Um, <clears throat> so technically, my blast should be quite decent for an ENFP. Right, because it's a savior and it's masculine S. You know, but it's so weird because I feel like my consume is easier to use than my blast, even though my blast mm -hmm. is higher up in the animal stack. And I think it's because of the function stack. It's that my... Yeah. Any and FI is my first two functions. So even though it's yeah. third, um, I feel like I can still use it with much better competence. Uh, well, if you think about it, right, NE is your top and then FI is masculine. So totally too, right? Wow. You have that. Yeah. And double activated. Now, with that being said, I was talking to Evelyn about it. Um, <clears throat> and even though my blast is still not good, it's better than the average ENFP. So I think that's where you want to kind of see the difference. Like your play, for example, is better than the average INTP, right? Like you would be better at engaging with other people and just goofing around, you know, you know, <laughs> acting, acting like a complete, like, you know, you know, what I call it, crazy person, you know, like it's, it's easy. <laughs> Yeah, it's e it would be easy for you to do that uh, versus another INTP who might be like, cannot compute, you know, like cannot compute, you know, like it is like, you know, like, but like, but for me, like, I, I, I it's like, so that's how she made them laugh. She said this, you know, like, you know, like, you know, like for you, it's like so easy, like it's so fluid, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but like for me, my blast is like, it's like kind of like earlier when you were telling me the story of you doing math problems. Like I, I was able to like explain it in, in like yes. clear, in clear, in a clear manner, um, how, why you were doing what you were doing. So I think cause like I, I did notice when I spoke to other ENFPs, they would be talking, right. And then I, I would have to like translate their NF to S to ST, but it, it would kind of, it's kind of like a funnel where I have to like, distill everything they're saying yeah. <laughs> and then like i can pretty much say i can take like what they said in like 15 minutes into like a few sentences pretty much you know so i'm like so this is what you're saying and they're like yes you're right i'm like yes that's right you know because because my, girl, my girlfriend's very nf also right and she's like she would talk she's blast last too so she'll go in a massive tangent for like half an hour and then after she's oh, what's your girlfriend's type uh, well she hasn't been officially typed but i'm pretty sure she's also in like I'm pretty sure we're both ENFP, but she's she's definitely consume play, like, uh, from what I can okay, see. Okay. Like she's a gathering monster, like, uh, <laughs> like massive gathering monster, and she's super NF, right? So it's like she'll talk to me for like half an hour, and I'll and like whatever she just said to me, I'll be like, so what you're trying to say is this, and I'll say it in like two sentences, right? She's like, yeah, that's right, and I'm like, oh my god, I just spent like thirty minutes listening to this, like, like NF, you know, like. <laughs> yeah you guys are so good at funneling what is really there but i i like, think but it's that. only because i have i think blast in my top three you know like like i think i think if if, if i had if i was a blast last enfp it would be really hard like i think blast last enfp like would really struggle with this i think you know i do have to say like dallas He's blessed last ENFP, and yes, he definitely struggles, but it's like 
when he comes out and says something, like when he chooses to like have a teaching moment, whoa. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but I still see what you're saying, but for you, it's natural. It's, it's, you can do it all day, every day. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like, I feel like I can bounce between um, play, play is definitely number one. Like my play is like, yeah. that's the, the most uh, obvious one. But my consumer and blast, I think is yeah. pretty balanced. Like I can switch between those two, um, no problem. So um, I, I think cool. my biggest struggle would be like actually using um, the physical sense of sleep. Like I don't, I don't have enough breaks, you know, and I get, mm -hmm. I used to get sick a lot. So that's my biggest problem. Preach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you, yeah, you and, you and uh, Parker would have this issue, right? So. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, go, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all day, every day. <laughs> so, all right, Julie, that was like a super fun talk. I think we, were, we almost went two hours, actually. So I was like, oh, my God, that was oh. supposed to be one hour. <laughs> we began two hours. <laughs> well, it's, it's, all yeah, it's all good. We had a good, good time. Um, yeah. All right. So um, I'll say goodbye to everyone. So bye, everyone. And thanks again to Julie. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Keep in touch, Kendrick. It was really great getting to know you. Yes, I will for sure. And I'll stop the recording and that's